There's nothing preventing me from ha getting 1.99 for 12 months now, and if things continue the way they are 11 months from now, I could just... I would have been doing that from the beginning, but I didn't quite come to that until I had already, you know, paid eight or nine years of interest on my mortgage. So at that point, it was like... A So I'm going to call a mortgage lender. Hello, this is. Hey, my name is Michael. I was looking to refinance my home, and I was wondering if you could help me with that. Yeah, absolutely. I could help. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So yeah, what's what's kind of the story? What's the the want, the need? What's really brought you to it? Yeah. So I've got a property in Tennessee. By the way, can you lend in Tennessee? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I got a property in Tennessee, um, value is 500,000, I owe 400. Um, my uh, interest rate I got a couple of years ago, um, so it's sitting about three and a half. Um, nice. I've got uh, you know income, about 12 grand, and then um, expenses, not including the mortgage, is about 4,500 a month. Um, Okay. So, you know, credit's good, all that's good. Um, and really, what I'm looking for, and it, I, I just saw it on YouTube and just wanted to, you know, pick your brain and see if it's a good fit, is, um, is really refinancing my whole mortgage and putting it into a home equity line of credit. Okay, yeah, yeah. Is that something you, you can, can help me with? Down to about, yeah, we can definitely look at that. Okay. So you would want to, like, trim it down to, like, a 20-year... No, um, really what I'm looking at is, you know, let's say I owe 400,000 is not only take the four, maybe even a little bit more that way I've got a, a little more uh, availability on my line, but refinance that 400,000 mortgage that I have at three and a half percent and convert everything to a home equity line of credit. And then I, I, what I've been watching on YouTube is then I could just dump all of my money into it and pay it off a lot quicker than I would on my 30. I see with the line. Yeah, no, I'm with you. That is, I mean, simple interest. If you can use that to your advantage rather than fighting the hammer ties, get, you know, interest. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely correct. So yeah, an equity line mm -hmm. would be. So you're very familiar with that strategy? Time. Cause I hadn't heard of it before. Yeah. Actually when I was, um, I watched a video about that back in like 2008. Eight, I think there was. Mm -hmm. um, people are going around and selling these programs, and, and apparently they do it a lot in Australia and other parts of the world where you would. And, and I used that kind of mentality to pay off a car loan that I had at the time that was like nineteen percent, mm -hmm. like twenty five. My credit was bad, right? Um, and then I realized I had I had a credit card that had a thousand dollar limit, and, but it was twenty two percent for the year. Yeah, it was twenty two percent rate, mm -hmm. but at twenty two percent for the year. So really, at the end of the month, it was a choice. My initial instincts were, oh, I have to pay off that 22% credit mm -hmm. card. But really, I was only paying like $30 a month in interest, mm -hmm. paying back that balance. And if I had taken that money and applied it to my car loan, when you look at the amortization schedule, it jumps you so much further ahead Yeah. as far as net interest saved on the asset. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Well, it's refreshing uh, to talk to someone like yourself because uh, I've made several phone calls today and everybody kind of looks at me uh, virtually like I've got two heads when I explain that I want to take a 3.5% mortgage rate and refinance it to potentially a higher rate um, on a home equity line of credit. Uh, yeah, people are usually like, why in the world would you do that? So it's refreshing that you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, when you look at amortization schedules and the way things are front loaded, you know, as far as interest paid, it's yeah, it's it, it's super attractive when you really get into the weeds. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, not a lot of people think about it like that. Yeah. Um, is that so, something you guys offer? The only bummer is that we don't do equity lines. We oh, okay. Do loans, but we can't do lines. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I would. What city are you in? I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, I mean. I know, you know, Truist, U.S. Bank, um, you know, and, and especially in these, like, you know, smaller banks, these little boutique shops, um, you know, they have an appetite for these lines of credit. Right. And they would love to put something for 400 on the books.
So outside of your car yeah. loan, uh, do you have personal experience of doing this on your house? Um, yeah, I mean, I had an equity line. I have an equity line on my condo in Nashville. Okay. And I didn't do the whole thing. Okay. But I've used my equity line to pay off amortized debt uh, on my wife's car. Nice. So it just saved, you know, when you looked at hers, I think it was 9% over five years, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, well, if I if this thousand dollar balance that I'm going to add to my equity line is only going to cost me, you know, 30, 40 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Whereas that thousand dollar principal payment on the car loan is going to save me $400 in interest over the life of the loan and also shorten the term. Right. So that I'm, I'm free of that payment sooner. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm uh, understanding with these YouTube videos is because of the nature of the home equity line of credit where money can move in and out freely 24 seven, I, I then start treating the HELOC like it's my checking account. So instead of making minimal payments, I put 12, 12 grand net as my income. So I put 12 grand in every yeah. month and then I pay my bills out of it. Actually, some of the videos go into a little bit more strategic way to pay the bills out. Yeah. That kind of speeds it up. But I mean, day of the month. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that, it, you know, it's from what I understand is these HELOCs recast every single day automatically for free, where I've looked at recasting yep. my mortgage, but my mortgage lender, Wells Fargo, is like, okay, well, we're going to charge you a couple hundred bucks to get it recast. And you have to do it strategically because we'll only allow you to do it twice over the lifetime of the loan, where the uh, HELOC does it for free every single day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if you can get the, the big boogeyman in this whole mentality is variable interest rate. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what horrifies people. But if you can get your head around, you know, what has happened in the last eight months has been. Um, you know, historic as far right. as increase in Fed funds rate. You know, like it, it wasn't even that, it didn't even move this quickly in the 80s. Right. So to think that this is going to continue forever, I, I just can't, I can't see it. You know, I feel yeah. like we're coming to the end of it where these Fed funds rates are going to sort of flatten out and then, you know, reality will set in with where we're at with the economy and maybe we'll kind of ease, ease back a bit. Yep, I agree. And I kind of went down yeah. that rabbit hole too. And there was two things that I noticed because based on my income and expenses, uh, the calculations project that I've got a 65 month payoff time frame, right? Uh, and that's at a higher rate. So even at a higher rate, it's, you know, five and a half years that I pay it off versus 28 yeah. years that I have left. So when doing the calculations, right. I mean, it's it's a fraction of the interest, even though it's at a higher rate, because I'm paying it off so fast, I, I don't even really feel yeah. the effects of the rate. But what I've been finding uh, when just doing, I haven't called the banks, but just doing some Google searches on some of these banks, mm -hmm. there's a lot of them offering like 12 month teaser rates, like, you know, 1.99 yeah. or 2.99. Oh, yeah. And they love the advance, you know, they want, they want a good advance on that initial chunk. Right. So it's, yeah, I mean, you're in a perfect position to take advantage. Yeah. Like, and really beat them. From what I understand from these YouTube videos is, you know, these HELOCs are substantially cheaper than mortgages. Like a lot of them, there's, there's no closing costs. They're free. So if mm -hmm. there's nothing preventing me from ha getting 1.99 for 12 months now, and if things continue the way they are 11 months from now, I could just refinance to another one at 1.99 and just, Keep the low exactly. rate. Go to a different bank. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So yeah, I, mean, I know you don't do it, and I know it, it, the same it, putting food on your table, but if you were me, does this sound like a sound plan? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. If, if I didn't, if I would have come to this a little sooner, knowing, if I would have come to this initially when I bought my condo in Green Hills, mm -hmm. I would have been doing that from the beginning. But I didn't quite come to that until I had already, you know, paid eight or nine years of interest on my mortgage. So at that point, it was like, all right, well, I'm just giving myself my own money back. What's preventing you, know, you from doing it now? Paid the bank. Well, I've already paid the bank all the interest they're pretty much going to get on the mortgage. So at this point in the life of my loan, I'm just returning principal back to myself. Yeah. You know? And I thought about that, too, if I was in a different... Interest is really paid back in the first 15 years. Yeah. I thought about that, too, if I was at a different... If I hadn't refinanced, you know, two years ago <laughs> to that low rate, you know, we're... Where would I be? And the other thing that kind of screams out to me is liquidity too, because I feel like we're going into some interesting yeah. times in the next 12 to 24 months. 
And not only am I paying it off so much faster, but I have access to everything I pay down. I have access to 24 seven and I have access to that yeah. capital, you know, should something bad come up or there's an opportunity. So, you know, something right. in and your you own know, situation to think about. Do get tight. All you're on the hook for is the end, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's nice as well to know that you could stay in your house for interest only if you really needed to. Well, I think it's really cool to talk to someone like yourself that um, has enough character because I've talked to other mortgage lenders that but most of them have no idea what I'm talking about. And even if they yeah. do, they're yeah. trying to convince me to still do a mortgage because I get it. It puts food on your, your plate, too. So uh, where this, yeah. you don't offer the product, but, you know, you're, you're being honest. So I appreciate your integrity. Yeah, I mean, I would tell people about this at the bank. You know, I used to manage the U.S. Bank on Richard Jones Road there, and they would look at me like I was crazy. Yeah. I'm like, well, all right. You know, we paid off a lot of, I got a lot of people to pay off their mortgages with equity lines while we were there. And uh, I think they're pretty happy about it in the long run. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for your candor. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do some more digging and some calling. Thank you, sir. All right. Good luck. All right. Take care. Appreciate it. Thanks. So you, you got to ask yourself, this is a mortgage lender, right? Obviously one with honesty and integrity, and I'm not saying that there's a, a majority of mortgage lenders out there or loan officers out there that don't have honesty and integrity. They just don't know. You, you don't know what you don't know. And most lenders and mortgage lenders don't know about the strategy. And even the ones that do are sometimes not apt to explain to you the benefits of this because it doesn't put food on, on their table. He didn't try to convince me otherwise that I shouldn't do it. Hey, there's you know a $400,000 mortgage that I could take an application on. If it closes, I could get four to $8,000 in commission. He took the high road. He was like, look, this is what I do in my own personal life. So you need to ask yourself the question that if the experts don't consume what they're trying to sell you, then why should you consume what the experts don't want? Take care. God bless.